Award-winning Elizabeth. That's me. Yes. How does it feel? Women in Science 2023. Oh, man. Um, if Can I be 100% honest with you? Yeah, 110% honest. 113. Yeah. I'm not great in the spotlight. So slightly uncomfortable, slightly okay. uncomfortable. Lots of social anxiety around it. Like all the uh, interviews that they have to do and stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh, what did I say? I can't, I'm like dividing my time until the magazine's coming out. Yeah. Or magazine. Yeah, magazine comes out. And I'm like, oh, God, it's killing me to know what she's writing. <laughs> Are they not sending you a little preview before it gets published? No, no, they haven't yet. They haven't yet. I know. So lots of sleepless nights, but that's oh. okay. <laughs> well, I'm sure no. it's going to be great. I've been behind the scenes on that. So oh, yeah. um, nothing, nothing that you wouldn't approve is going to be out there but no. that's awesome so yeah I'm so, so happy for you thank you yeah I mean it, in all actuality it feels good to be recognized you know I work pretty hard and we have exactly. a great team they lift me up and I try to lift them up so yeah I'm happy to be recognized how did you get into the science industry well I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the picture for you first <laughs> as to where I was during that time I think it was, it dates back, I think, like 2014. Um, and I was working as a graphic designer for Golden Boy Productions, the mm -hmm. boxing company. Yeah. So I was doing all, all the graphics for them. Unfortunately, I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer, for, like straight out of school, because it seemed fun. Um, and I was doing a lot of still screen printing. And, you know, when you're in school with your friends and, everything's fun there's no responsibility so I thought that that was going to be graphic design like just having fun all sure. the time I'm like hell yeah I want to do that for a living for sure and then I got a real job and it was not what I thought it was going to be and so that I I was like I can't do this it was more like I, I didn't have the creative freedom that I was looking for and it just seemed like more of an office type of vibe even like dress code was implemented and so um, then I was like I'm just gonna go find something else and uh, my friends were like and you know family they're like you should probably find something first and then quit sure. your job it's easier to find a job when you have a job. Exactly. I was like, what are you talking about? That's nonsense. So yeah. uh, next thing you know, they were right. And um, I couldn't find a job for the life of me. And I was running out of money that I had. And I, you know, I had bills to pay and I couldn't find a job. And I was like, oh, no, what's happening? I thought I could just get a job anywhere. And so um, I was applying. I was on Craigslist, which... You know, I wouldn't dare to go on there nowadays. But back then, you could just, like, apply. And, yeah. Like, you know, there was a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing that. I was, like, sending, like, my resume, like, just applying to so many places to the point where I lost track to, like, how many places I applied to or who I even applied to. Sure. And I started getting phone calls. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm getting these interviews. And I would be like, who's this again? Where is it? What? what? You know, because it was just, like, I, I was not organized with where I was applying. I just needed a job so bad. And um, so looking back now, like I probably shouldn't have done what I did because it was sketchy. I It's like in the movies when you're watching a scary movie and you're talking to the character like, don't go in there. Why, why are you going in that room? Don't go in that room. So that's kind of like how I see myself now in the past because they call me. And they're like, hey, like, come, come interview. And I'm like, okay, give me the address. And I, I get the address. I'm driving there. And the neighborhood starts getting kind of, you know, sketchy. And mm -hmm. then, like, turn here. Like, the maps is like, turn right. And then I'm in this alley. And I'm like, cool. And then there's this, like, the address show that it was this warehouse, like, completely closed off. And, like, mind you, I didn't know anything about signage at this point. I didn't even know that that was like the vibe that sign companies have of being so it like, really is. yeah, <laughs> it's 
being like almost unnoticeable and like in this like weird warehouse that has no windows and then you walk inside and it's like Disneyland, right? But I'm like in this alley and there's this warehouse and then it goes to go to the back more and then you have to open this gate and it's so shady. I was like, oh, okay. So nobody knows I'm here. I'm in this like warehouse, empty warehouse and I parked the car and I walked through the back and at the time I didn't know what like you know boom trucks wear or lifts or anything but there was like a bunch of them parked and wrapped with the company logo and i was like okay so i go and i meet somebody in the back and they're like oh yeah it's through here and, I, and i'm like yeah. following this random dude <laughs> into the back of this warehouse I'm like yeah either that or kill me because i'm fine with both mm -hmm. and so um and so he slides this door, this gate, just whoosh, and my eyes lit up. And in that moment, I was like, holy crap, this is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I just saw, like, the fabricators welding, and I can smell the, you know, the smell of the paint. And, you know, they, you know, they had some, like, signs there on display, like, lit up. And, you know, I can hear the phones ringing, the plotter going, like, people like on sales and then I see like far out like some computers where people are designing and everything was just like whoa what is this this is awesome I want to work here I, this is what I want to do and so they wanted to start me off as basically like doing site surveys right just mm -hmm. driving around the city measuring buildings sketching out the building mm -hmm. and coming back and giving that information to the designers so I did that and even that I didn't know anything about I had to sort of fly a little bit and be like yeah I know how to do that like well, I can make it yeah 100% yeah. mm -hmm. and but I was like as far as like measuring I'm like I, like okay, I need to remember how to do this and then you know when things get really big then you're you're fighting the wind and then when you have to go up high like it's got its own challenges that you know at the time I didn't know anything about and so I did that for men I would come back and bring these awesome sketches with really precise information to the designer and they were like whoa usually <laughs> we have to beg for things like this you know because it's usually like really bad writing or or they're missing some information that is so vital to like the design and then you have to right. send somebody out there again so I was like really trying to overachieve and all I wanted to do was design uh and so I was trying to get kind of on the designer's good side but at the end of the day like this thing didn't work out right like they were just like you know how it goes they were just pulling my leg Sure. One one time it was like a Friday. Everybody's getting paid. Everybody's getting their checks, and and I didn't get yeah. mine. And I was like, Oh, nope. I, I I think he forgot. Oh no, it's because we we we're starting you like on this like apprentice internship kind of. And I'm like, that wasn't disclosed. Like I've been here for like two weeks, like driving around the city, you know. Like so, I was like, it's fine, you know. Thanks for everything. And uh, at least the way I saw it was like, well, at least now I know what I want to do and mm -hmm. what to look for. Mm -hmm. So then I just looked up sign companies, you know, around the area and I found a few and I applied there and I got a, I got a job at one and I was there for about a year, a little over a year. And uh, I did a lot of sign work there. Uh, but then after that, I yeah. went to work for a different sign company after that as well. And that's the company where I actually was there for five years. And that's where I learned the most. So I was like, hands on, just going to workshops, going like sign expo, like meeting people, like learning all the materials, like production, sales, like, so I learned all the aspects of the business there. And, uh, you know, designing, I already... I already had like the graphic design background, but now like what I tell people is like designing for sign making, it helps to have the background, but it's like its own complete mm -hmm. different thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had to almost uh, learn from scratch a lot of the stuff, even though it helps to know a lot of the design rules and whatnot, but you kind of have to learn how to do it in a sense where like, 
you have to think of how it's going to get produced. You have to think yeah, about and fabrication. Uh, you, yeah. the fabrication, mm -hmm. how, you know, even the, the thickness and depths of materials are going to affect the overall outcome, how it's going to get installed. Like all those things have to play in the back of your head. You mean you know, you mean like the, the drawings that architects give you where the sign's just floating in midair and it's illuminated? That's not possible? <laughs> oh, you mean the neon sign that doesn't yeah. get plugged into anything and it lights yeah. up? <laughs> and it's not attached to any wall? Yeah, That's and it doesn't have wires? Can you do yeah. a neon sign with no wires? <laughs> <I'm just laughs> so, <laughs> so I did that and then um, unfortunately, like I feel like there's a little bit of like a bad reputation with small to medium sized companies that are local because um, I feel like a lot of them get a little bit stuck in one level. And then therefore you sort of get your own wings clipped a little bit like because there's nowhere else they can sort of help you go. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not, it's not always intentional. It's not always like they're trying to be that way. It just mm -hmm. sort of happens with the environment and how where they stop developing as artists or owners or business people. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what forced me to sort of make a, a decision where it was kind of, I was kind of back to that square one where like, I'm just going to quit my job and see what happens. And I should have learned my lesson. <laughs> and, and so my option was like, get a job at another company that is a bigger size company that I can continue to learn. Um, or, like just venture out and start my own thing with the information that I already have. And then that way, basically my learning ability depends on myself and nobody's capping that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I went ahead and I started Science from Mars and I started really strong and um, I was doing doing so good I couldn't believe it like I had so much work I was having so much fun I, I had so much more freedom with like being creative and the way I wanted to present my work and uh and I was like oh my god why why didn't I do this sooner yeah. and and I was like this is crazy like what's the worst that can happen you know I should have done this a, a while ago and then next thing you know I I officially went on my own in January of 2020 right and then so actually it was like December late December of 2019 and I, I was like what's the worst that can happen so January you know everybody's like in in like holiday like nobody's really working nobody even knew like that I was doing anything because everybody's uh off of work anyway and I was like what's the worst that can happen and so I started January really strong February really strong March, I'm like, yeah, let's go. I like my birthday's in March. So I was like, I'm going to celebrate big. And then it's like worldwide pandemic. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's the worst thing that can happen. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, it um, kind of like didn't affect me how it affected bigger companies. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it helped me because bigger companies around my area were either shutting down or struggling. So I was getting the leftover work that you know they couldn't take or weren't willing to so mm -hmm. i didn't really um have have any problem there but um yeah that's kind of how how it went down i mean and here we are now awesome that is a journey that's a journey <laughs> and it landed you here in the sign yeah, industry i know, so you. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah russell has commented in the comment section murder barn when you were talking about yeah. the warehouse that's what we call them and there have been multiple occasions like I remember a couple specific one I was with Russell and we were driving up to a new warehouse like a sign fabricator who's a smaller fabricator and it was like a barn legitimately yeah. a barn in the back of like this weird alley and we before we got out of the car looked at each other and said this might be the last place we ever go so just know <laughs> I love it you. Feels, it feels that way. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one where I brought my PM. We were looking for like a very specific, um, it was a laser engraving service and like uh -huh. it was a small company ended us up in this like pretty shady neighborhood. And so I'm looking at my PM like, okay, so I might, uh, might get you killed right now. And for that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> Just know you've done a great job. <laughs> It totally feels that way. I mean, 
it's <laughs> there's something about these like side places that it's like let's just make it the scariest most unwelcoming place ever yeah exactly i know i don't i don't understand it but it is like the norm i was it also is. supposed to say at the beginning of this if anyone has questions you can throw them in the comments and we'll get to them i'm just not good at doing live so i didn't say that at the beginning so saying it now good. Good. yeah if you guys have any questions or any comments go ahead and add those at the bottom um, what about you? Tell me, uh, tell me uh, about your story, how you sort of okay. came about. Um, Mine is like the complete opposite of yours. Um, I grew up in the sign uh, industry. My dad, when I was growing no up. idea how jealous I am of that. <laughs> I wish that I know was you my story. That. <laughs> <laughs> so you know one of those murder barns you were talking about? <laughs> I grew up in, no. Uh, my dad uh, owned one of the larger one of the largest uh, sign manufacturing facilities in Austin, one of the largest in Texas, and I think the largest in Austin wow. uh, while I was growing up, which was great for all of my posters that I had because every single one had like an intricate acrylic frame oh, custom yeah. made. So you were like, and then, it yeah. is cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, my car was wrapped, though <laughs> if I have to be completely transparent. It was wrapped with like Superman logos and flames because yes, I mean, yes. it was the early aughts and I was really cool. Please tell me you have the pictures of that. I'm sure there is somewhere okay. that hasn't been done yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that also means I, I grew up, you know, doing different things in the sign company, not getting paid for them. Like I was just annoying people when I was young, um, trying to get in their way pretty yeah. much. Uh, so naturally, as a teenager, I said, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm never doing this. Right, <laughs> Who right. would want to do this for a living? Um, so I went completely opposite. I actually uh, was, we went to Boston a lot because I have a lot of family there. And we were in Faneuil Hall once. There was this old barbershop and some guy was getting a straight razor shave. And I was like, I don't know what's going on there, but that looks like something I really want to do. Okay. <laughs> so, did that. Uh, I'm, I am still a Texas Class A barber. Oh, wow. I'm still licensed. Yeah, okay. real fun. <laughs> um, which comes in handy during a worldwide pandemic and your husband can't go get a haircut. True. Yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. he could just fine. Um, but, you know, I did that for a while and then I put myself through college. Uh, I have a degree in accounting. Nice. So I'm actually the opposite side of the business as yeah. you. I am not the creative one. Thank yeah. God for that. Because <laughs> every once in a while, I'll um, I do my best sketch for an idea. And it is stellar. Okay. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, stick figures are my forte. Yeah. So, well, and not good way. ones. <laughs> yeah, they're not. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, anyway, so I... Uh, had an accounting degree. I've always, because I grew up with two entrepreneurial parents, I've always um, kind of liked, I have an affinity for small businesses. So mm -hmm. after graduating college with my accounting degree, I started at a small tech firm uh, here in Austin. And that tech firm was, I was the sixth employee. And nine months later, when I left, they had 300. So it was no oh. longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it was and I was responsible for, like, onboarding all of them and, you know, wow. all of that. Stuff. Yeah. It was a nightmare job. But then I was like, okay, so that's not a small business. I really like small businesses. And I yeah. went to work for, um, very random, a fashion company owned by a uh, child prodigy. Uh -huh. So my job was 13 at the time, wow. uh, which was really cool. Just yeah. a different experience I never thought I'd have. Mm -hmm. Um but it taught me a lot about what it means to be a leader and what you do and don't have to be mm. um, or do like and don't me, have to do. Like, give me an, an example of what you mean by that. Sure. She was 13. No 13 year old can take themselves that seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can try, but they're 13. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, it just kind of taught me to have an environment of an environment that people will actually enjoy being in but still get their work done. Mm -hmm. Like in an, an environment, I think my favorite thing, although we don't implement it here, and I have a feeling all of my team members would love if I did, but like after meetings, she'd be like, okay, back to twerk, and we'd all twerk very poorly back to our desks. <laughs> it was, 
just little things. And though I yeah. haven't implemented that at Studio Zoe, it's more like, oh, like you can do fun things. You don't have to have this air of seriousness and all day, every day, mm -hmm. you know. And what I've always said, owning Studio Zoe is there. The sign industry is not life or death. A lot of people will act like an issue is life or death. Oh yeah, it, it mean, is not. They act like we're responsible for like curing cancer. <laughs> like it's like we're making signs. People calm down. Yeah, <laughs> and it can be it can be enjoyable to do that. I mean, in every company, in every work day. I mean, there are times you have to buckle down and get your work mm -hmm. done, but you can still do it being around people that you enjoy. And so I think that what that's developed into is just our strong desire to maintain company culture mm -hmm. and make sure that we've developed this environment that people enjoy being in. And that's continued on as we've become a remote business, which isn't that easy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she ended up obviously going to college at like, I think she was 15 or 16. The next, the next day. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> if you ever, like think, oh, I've done a lot of things in life, but it took you 10 years to finish your bachelor's degree, yeah. and then you work for a child prodigy who's, like, she went to, like, Parsons at 15. It's like, oh, wow. shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> um, anyway, so at that time, you know, Russell, uh, he was working for Dell. He was on the global band, brand team. Uh, he had been their art director for about five years, so his job was kind of outfitting spaces with the brand for events uh, as part of his many, many tasks that he did. But so he kind of had dive, or dove in a little bit to this sign world and somehow convinced me, because he also wanted to leave his job and didn't have another job, uh, convinced me to do this. And here we are. I'm back. I've made it. Full circle. He's like, you have a lot of experience in this. And I'm like, mm, what do I? And I do really enjoy it. I think there are parts of it that come very naturally to me because it's just something I've done my entire life. I think the biggest part that I enjoy is I, because I'm still in Austin, I actually get to work with a lot of the people that mm -hmm. I literally grew up yeah, with. That's cute. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, who also own their own businesses now, yeah. and we get to. It brings a different appreciation right. to it. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, you're you're carrying on that almost that generation or legacy. Now, let me ask you mm -hmm. something. Do, do, your parents, how do they feel about you uh, being in this, uh, being back in the sign industry? Uh, my dad loves it. My mom was an attorney, so she is not, oh, okay. uh, she wasn't in the sign industry, <laughs> she was like, but. She, she's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, my dad loves it. He was he that he actually kind of helped us kickstart. So part of what we did when we started Studio Zoe is he had just he was very bored. He's an entrepreneur, so he doesn't sit still for very long. Mm -hmm. um, and he had just I mean less than a year he had kind of started a, another sign company, but wasn't really in it. So we kind of with a nice paycheck convinced him to retire, yeah. and yeah. then turned turned that business into what we wanted it to be yeah. instead of just doing it the same way because like you said a lot of small um sign businesses they back themselves into a corner mm -hmm. you know they're designing to their equipment exactly. they're designing to their capabilities yeah. but also as you said a lot of sign industry uh individuals or designers some of them are only trained in sign industry design and don't have that graphic design background, don't understand what, um, and, and, and I shouldn't be speaking to this, but don't understand everything that goes into a brand and what scalability really means yeah. and how to be cohesive, make your sign package and the branding guidelines cohesive so your space looks like it's supposed to look exactly. uh, so like you don't walk into a building and you see a blue restroom sign on the wall with you know dark green walls yeah it's not yeah it's not, not how it's supposed to be yeah. <laughs> or um, even worse you go to a restaurant and there's no restroom sign <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly um yeah is it just us or do you also look around every single space and every single is, building and like, oh, is, that's seriously, not oh my yeah. god it is kind of like it's a curse but also it's like really entertaining yeah. because then 
I can tell my mood for that day on how I'm <laughs> judging signs. <laughs> if I'm like, oh God, yeah. like, why would they do that? And blah, blah, blah. Then I'm like, oh Lord, I'm in a bad mood today. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. And I'm taking photos of it. And I'm like, I'm in a good mood today. <laughs> I, I see good signs. <laughs> How many car accidents have you almost gotten in pointing out a sign on a building? <laughs> yeah. Um, are so, are you know, with your friends? Do you ever drive around and like, hey, I did that? Oh, yeah, all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then you purposely take that street that you don't need to go <laughs> just to be like, oh, 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 yeah, I did that anyway, and then you go back. I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny that I changed my route based on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I think that our our whole we've been doing this now since oh my gosh it's been almost six years uh, and I I think our uh, April will be six years I think uh, but I should know that oh that's bad it's I'll a, no, hear about it's okay. yeah. it's going on. <laughs> <laughs> our our whole you know we have a few different mottos at Studio though design first is how we lead all of our projects you know we don't compromise on design. We make sure that it's a focus um, for every project that we bring in. Oh, Russell's correcting me. Seven years. Yeah, My bad. Right. Get it right. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm sure if y'all have ever been on our Instagram or <laughs> anything, uh, do good work for good people with good people. Yes. That's yep, our, I yeah. I, we, you, if you've seen anything about us, you haven't not seen that. So um, that's something that Russell I came up with that that's how we lead not just how we treat our partners uh, which is what we call clients we mm -hmm. call them partners because for us it is a true partnership uh, but it's also how we treat our team um, which is why during the pandemic you know we similar to you it, it it affected us for a very short amount of time luckily knock on wood um, but we also didn't have to do any layoffs we didn't furlough anyone we kept everyone on staff full time and our biggest thing was we're not going to turn our backs on the people that have ha had our backs for yeah. this many years like that's yeah, not the first thing we're exactly. going to do and i so. think that's the, like one of the big differences between like a small company and a big corporate corporation is that mm -hmm. there's still some type of family sort of um feeling to the smaller company which you know you mentioned that you like you prefer the small company uh because it's more like family and it's more like you can you can expect to count on each other and be there for each other and have the quality you know that that you want and the uh, control over like you said design and uh the way that you treat your clients whereas when it becomes you know a bigger corporation you unfortunately have to sacrifice a lot of that you have mm -hmm. to sacrifice the culture of being a close family or even having to get fired and it's not personal it's just business you know mm -hmm. it's just numbers mm -hmm. and then what happens with that is the quality of the product also has mm -hmm. to take a hit because they have to produce so much to mm -hmm. keep the size of the company that they are now and so you know if there's anything that I like to tell uh, my clients as well is like well you know pricing could be a little, little bit higher with me than like maybe a bigger company but the quality is going to be very different because they don't have time to spend too much on details or you know little things here and there or even get back to you if anything were to happen where you sign needed maintenance um, and so that's why it's it's different, you know, and, and I'm with you on that. I, I actually prefer it this way as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and for the same reason, because I, I, I've seen how like bigger companies operate and I can mm -hmm. see like, oh, I understand why they have to sort of sacrifice all those things that I value. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it comes down to to what we want. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we we say similar things. We always tell people, like, we don't bid on projects. It's not our it's not our model. We're not we don't do that. Um, and the reason is we're never going to be the cheapest. And when you're getting bids like that, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, like, I'm not going to waste my time filling that out. I'm going to give you probably 
and no no shade to like larger companies i'm going to give you better service yeah. because i have less of a load yeah um to spread myself across but also uh i'm with that better service is going to come higher prices like i'm mm-hmm. just i'm a boutique yeah, and that's- I'm a white glove <laughs> approach if you will <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm going on that i did want to get i know a couple people asked some questions yeah, oh my gosh see. i do want to just say uh someone just joined amber king who was the project manager that i took to that shady house and oh, i apologized hey, to her she was gonna say she's yeah. alive and she's alive on, on, she's here to tell the yeah. tale I know. Yeah. um Brittany yeah. asked what is the hardest part of being a woman in the sign industry go for it wait you go first uh, you got it I- you know, you, okay. Um, let's see. What is well, there's quite a bit actually. I mean, <laughs> there's quite a bit just living in the world. But I okay. think for me, uh, the most recent sort of struggle would be um, how do I phrase this? Like, I don't know, know like why, but I have this constant feeling that I have to prove myself more and to be taken like seriously or like if I I mean because I'm relatively young still in comparison to the people in the sign industry you know mm-hmm. I love y'all I love y'all but I'm pretty I'm little uh, uh, so I'm like relatively young in comparison to most people in the sign industry um, and then I'm a chick so then you know when I'm dealing with these like older dudes that are like looking at me like what do you know about Mm -hmm. how this electrical line is gonna run and you know Mm -hmm. what do you know about led what do you know about Mm -hmm. installation what do you know about permits and like you know and i just kind of feel like i have to try harder to prove myself uh because it's not instant and then it's not something that they feel like okay yeah i'm gonna trust her right away like I have to almost earn that every single time, and once I once I do, then you know there's no more questions asked, you know. But at the at the very start of anything, I feel like that's that's a lot of what I deal with right now, um, and it's and then I I know people like I know older people don't don't mean to say things the way that it comes off sometimes but I, I get a lot of these like hey darling oh sweetheart oh sweetie. Like, <laughs> oh, <Hi. yes>. yeah. <laughs> and so to me it's like it's almost like they're trying to like minimize me in some way like mm-hmm. you know I'm just this like cute little flower or something yeah. and it Today, I have a woman call me because I get it honey I'm also very young for this industry as yeah, you can no, tell I I mean, yeah <laughs> Uh, not enough gray hairs to be in this industry. Uh, anyway, um, the other day, an accountant called me. It was like a job accountant for one of our projects. She called me on the phone, and we emailed back and forth. I mean, at this point, hundreds of times shortly through this project. And um, I answered the phone. Hello, this is Elizabeth. Oh my God, listen to your little brawl. I was like, oh. Okay, that's where we're going. Cool. Oh. <laughs> wow. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> I've never felt so young in my entire life. Like, that's Did you what I mean. Like, yeah. through the phone? <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, they don't mean anything bad by it. Like, it's almost like yeah. they're not aware of what no. they're doing, but it's like, oh man, like, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> but to your point, you know, that's probably one of the harder things things to deal with because in our in our company both myself and then one other person Paul who's one of our art directors um, we have the most legacy knowledge of sign Mm -hmm. you know this is something that both of us I grew up in this industry so I've heard these terms I know what these are uh, I mean my entire life whether it was through osmosis or being involved both Um, and then he worked you know he's been in the industry for gosh over a decade so Nice. He also has this legacy knowledge, and they people don't typically look to me in the meetings for that knowledge. Oh my god! I always love being 
be the one that throws it out though because it's always the look of like oh yeah okay yeah <laughs> but also you know i've walked into a construction trailer where this was back in the beginning days you know when we were still doing construction bids only with companies that we had worked with previously like that was our first line like oh we'll do bids but only if we have a relationship with this contractor yeah and the contractor or architect made a blatant error on their drawings where they showed a detail but they didn't show it as typical which means to me i'm only seeing one location and because it doesn't say typical i'm not going to continue to look for it because you said one yeah uh, it didn't say typical so when i pointed that out to them and showed them well we bid for one because your drawing's incorrect mm -hmm. and they said oh well you must be new at this and i was like i must be new at this because you made a mistake <laughs> i'm really confused by that <laughs> like, what but it's, it's definitely these little tactics they're just they're microaggressions really and even if they're not intended it's what it is, it is what it is and and they add up so you know you, you speak of them as micro and it's like yeah like it's gonna add up to where eventually you're you just have to sort of say something and yeah. then and then you risk be coming off as this like entitled or like rude absolutely millennial or whatever Whatever they want to say, and it's like, what well, yeah. do you do? Know, yeah. and, and it's so funny that you say that. Uh, like, there's been times where I go on site, and I've had installers with me, and just to look at the location and make sure they're aware of what the, you know, the project's going to look like. And then the client starts talking to them because they're older dudes, and it's like they're the installers. Um, yeah. <laughs> right here, I'm your, I'm, I'm your point of contact, yeah. <laughs> and, and you yeah. know, and they're sort of almost like dismiss me, and I'm like, cool, all right, so Excellent. I'm still dealing with that. So Love yeah, it. unfortunately, yeah. that's one of the things. I'm sure it's not only in the sign industry, yeah. but uh, I think it's. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think it runs rampant in any construction-based mm -hmm. industry. It's a very dominated industry to this day, yeah. and I think that there's. In my own opinion, I think that also because of all these microaggressions, it's almost trained a lot of the older women in this industry to conform to mm -hmm. their views of what women should be in this industry. So, like I like to say, you don't have to power, you don't have to wear a power suit to be empowered in the sign industry. Like it's yeah. not, you don't have to look like that. Yeah. You can be yourself and know what signs are. It's, like yes, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you're right. yeah. my biggest, um, my biggest biggest incident I had as being a woman in the sign industry and it literally just happened like the beginning of it happened years ago where we ended up firing a partner because they were disrespectful to our employees multiple times in front of their client which was the end client and it was like look I can't I can't do that like you can't throw this person under the bus for something they didn't do constantly like we're supposed to be a team and so going forward we don't want to be your sign provider which mm -hmm. you know it was a very large construction company I definitely had a panic attack after that phone call and I was like oh my god did I just like ruin my business yeah. by taking away all of these jobs yeah Marcy called my dad no way your dad yeah because he happens to know my dad too he called my dad to ask like about it and asked my dad to talk to me. Wow. Yeah. Dad. Years later, we, we still have not worked with them, yeah. right? And they would like to work with us. He called my dad again. Oh my God. <laughs> and, then my, and then asked my dad to talk to, not me, the person your, that had the conversation, my husband, yeah. My, yeah. my business. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not gonna get you very far, but. <laughs> Yeah, but these oh, no. things, they happen a lot, and some of them are blatant like that, and some of them are microaggressions like, mm -hmm. hey, honey. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. Hello, <girl. laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I think, you know, it's going to take a long time for that to, to, to change or to not Absolutely. be as, as... I think like, it's also how we respond to them. Yeah, I you think... Know? I think like the more we 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 voice ourselves yeah. and and make ourselves more equal to to the industry and to you mm -hmm. know there's really I mean 
no age or gender can really really determine how good you are at making signs. It really plays absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. nothing. Yeah, like it's just silly, you know, but uh, yeah, that's that's a, that was a good reality. One. That was a, Is there that any, was a any, good question. Any other yeah. questions that, that people yeah. have? I don't know how. One other person oh. asked a question that I see and it says, what's the one project that would be the holy grail for your careers, both of you? Um, I think some of my favorites have been Cute Nail Studio. That's been really fun, um, mainly because we not only get to do super fun things that we don't get to do yeah. for other people, um, like designing cute daggers. Like, you don't get to do that for everybody. That is true. Um, I can't say I've done that. <laughs> yeah. Name, we get to help them name services, like butt stuff. That's fun. Like, you don't get to do that all the time. It's a nail studio but that does, like, waxing and masks and stuff yeah and we they did a mask for bums and they asked us to name it and we said butt stuff and it that's what it's called it's fantastic um i think that and then also we just really like what they stand where they stand for their safe space and they're super welcoming to everybody mm -hmm. um and we just like that so i guess that's my favorite one that we've done but she's saying, like, what, what would be the Holy Grail? I guess in that case, uh, what it was, would be not what I already was. <laughs> I've been told I shouldn't think this by multiple people because you should never work with your idols. Um, you know what? Yes, they do say that. Like, don't meet your heroes. But I wouldn't mind working with Disney. <laughs> yeah, so that's a tricky one yeah. because, wait, you're in Texas, yeah? Okay, yeah. So so I'm I'm in LA. So I've I've actually gone to Disney to bit some jobs before. Yeah, and there's like super hella politics involved. That's and what I've they, heard. Yeah, and so they almost like the bids are more like to sort of abide by the law of like having to see what else is out there and give other people an opportunity. But at the end of the day, like they're pretty set on who they already are going to work with because they, they have those relationships. So that can be close yeah. because one of our partners does like student housing developments and they developed housing for um, cast members in oh, Florida. Nice. Oh, nice. And they were like, we really want to bring you in. We're going to try. But Disney has their own sign. Like they have yeah. a sign company. They have their own. I was going to say that. They have their own sign company and they have their own neon in-house neon uh shop yeah because nothing can be broken or not working for more than like a few hours yeah so you know they have people like just going around the park and making sure everything's working if anything's not working that same night they're already like making a new piece and changing it up and no. it's pretty wild but so, like if i could know. just be involved in managing mickey neon i i feel like i'd be really happy <laughs> I did score a, I know it's not supposed to be West, but I did score a really cool job. Like, you know how, like, Disney works, too, is, like, you, like, essentially don't own the rights to mm -hmm. anything. <laughs> like, you have to sign NDAs and you can't show the work or anything. But I, I was part of um, the Disney Plus Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, TV show they did. They have this scene where they, they're in some sort of, uh, um, city where it's like an alley kind of, it kind of looks like a futuristic like Tokyo or something mm -hmm. and it has a bunch of signs neon signs everywhere and so mm -hmm. I did do some of that work and right, right. it's pretty I, I'll text you the pictures because I'm not allowed to post them um, <laughs> but it's really really cool. That's like, so cool oh my god it's so awesome that was a really fun project um but for me, like, I don't know, like, I... I just want you I, to know my level of jealousy right now is so freaking out. <laughs> like, I'm so I know that I'm um, also praising you and lifting you up, but, like... <laughs> yeah. um, for me, like, what project I would like to do, I, I want something kind of crazy. I want some, like, like, I don't know. I, 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 I just want something huge like I don't know like something for like production like for a show or like the Super Bowl or something I just want like something massive like some massive job that yeah, is one of my gonna, like 
that uh, little painting, Meg Howard. Uh -huh. She's the one that just did the big mural at the Super Bowl no this year. Way. Yeah, I'm super See, proud. That's so cool. I know. But yeah, yeah, other than that, I mean, it's hard to say because every project is really just fun. Like every yeah. project that I get to do, give it gives me that feeling. Like it just brings me alive, and I'm excited about it. And so, it's hard to answer that that question I think because it is I, it I can't say that any project would like really make my life complete I mean it's because like if anyone knows me it would be Disney something related to Disney or something related to Harry Potter and yeah. I'd be set so I guess that's Disney or Universal and I'd be good I guess another way I can think about it is like a huge job where it would be like um like a high profit it job uh, mm -hmm. because where I kind of see myself going or where I want to sort of take the company uh, the direction I want to take the company in the next few years is I actually want to start um, creating like a sign academy and where I can provide the classes and workshops for people to learn uh, the craft mm -hmm. and have the opportunity like if they you know like a school like you graduate and you get you know your mm -hmm. your certification and everything and then you know at that point you'll know if this is for you and if you love it and if you want to do that to for a living then they'll have the opportunity to go mm -hmm. ahead and and get hired so that That's would amazing. that would help like if it was like a huge job where it was like you know, really good profit, then it would help expedite that process of just getting that going. So, mm -hmm. I mean, in that sense, I guess I can think of it like that, but. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, it, that's actually something that, well, we kind of started our sign school Saturday I for that. I don't know if you've that. seen it. Dude, yeah. So uh, <laughs> because so we've noticed the same thing. Like there's the only educational materials they have for the sign industry that I've found Disclaimers that I've found. No, no, um, no. Like, it's so true. It's, it is yeah, not yeah, it's, No, there's one, there's some through ISA, yeah. and yeah. everyone on our team has watched. We've repurchased and purchased yeah. those videos so many times because they do have some good, like, basic knowledge stuff, um, but there are so many intricacies that it, it's hard to just capture in online learning courses. It is. Um, but, you know, Russell has also tried to introduce that. He's a professor at Austin Community College, and uh, he's a portfolio professor in the design program, so he's their capstone class. Uh -huh. And he's talked to the dean, like, hey, can we get a sign design class? Yes. Like, that yes. would that's a whole other ball game. I'm so glad that you're on that same, yes. like, boat, because we need it. Yes. We need it so bad. Um, and like you said, a lot of it um, has to come from people that have lived through it and because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that you can't learn or teach through just the book and even then there's not a lot of sign making books um, and the very few that are out there are some of them are good but most of them are just not even that great and uh, we really need to get that out there because like, that's the only way that we're going to be able to like keep the industry growing and and mm -hmm. and even making it new again basically because uh unfortunately like a lot of people that have this information like neon vendors and you know and fabricators and installers that know these little tricks that they learned that you can only learn on site you know they're they're not teaching it or they're dying with that information yeah. unfortunately yeah. and then it's like yeah. you know and then that's where you know LED starts to take over or like people start doing more like lazy work design where it's just like yeah we'll just do that that works you know as long mm -hmm. as it reads whatever like no like there should be still that art form involved and that mm -hmm. that still has like a soul to it you know so mm -hmm. yeah I've seen I've seen that Saturday stuff that you guys are posting it is so good it is so good I'm so in love with those Thank things you. I would I wish I had anything to do with it. I don't. That is 100% Erica Russell and Paul oh, and Dorothy. You're killing it. I know. Somebody she's. Said, oh, when we were 
talking about what job we would like to do. Somebody said ice cream truck, <laughs> actually. <laughs> oh, was that Go Go Tawny? It had to be. Okay, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. She just opened her own ice cream truck, and I'm super jealous. Like, that sounds so fun. Dude, uh, yeah. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Give your younger self one piece of advice when you started in the industry. Knowing what you know now, what would it be? Run first. Don't go to the murder Run first. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I uh, think that's a hard one. I don't know that, it, you know, it's my younger self. I think it's just like, I still tell myself today, like, don't let, don't let the microaggressions get you. Like, you know what you're doing. You're here for a reason. I think it's imposter syndrome too. And when someone yeah. moves into anything that helps feed that, that imposter syndrome, it's like, it just grows and grows inside of you. So just, you know, yeah. Tell it just <laughs> what advice I would give myself actually it would be to, I guess it's probably tied to the microaggressions that we spoke about earlier, because when you're not aware that that's happening to you, mm -hmm. it does affect your, your confidence in a way, because I feel like I was under the shadows of a lot of people uh, for most of my career in the sign industry up until I went out on my own. And so it, it sort of gave me this feeling that I didn't trust myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, I could I do this? Like, do I know what I'm doing? <laughs> like, it almost mm -hmm. starts to make you doubt yourself and, and you question. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I would tell myself to stand up for myself when I felt like it was necessary, because I didn't a lot of the time I let the, you know, the insults happen. I let the, you know, inequality, the treatment happen. I let the little cat name or, you know, whatever, the sweeties and this and that. Like, I, I played along to that a lot. And, uh, and then even though I was, like, overachieving and, like, doing more work than other people and all that stuff, I never really stood up for myself to say, hey – you know, let's, let's reevaluate me. I know that I started from nothing and I didn't know anything about the sign industry, but I became obsessed with it. And now I surpassed people that have been in it for five years. So mm -hmm. I didn't stand up for myself in that sense where like, I wasn't giving myself enough credit for how much work I put into it and how much I had learned and grown and how much respect I actually deserved. And so I think now that I'm aware of those things, now it's like diff it's a different Mars. <laughs> now, so now, but then again, it's like being on my own and like representing my own company. It's like I don't get to hide anywhere or in anybody's shadow anymore. So, mm -hmm. so I have to sort of remind myself like this is how you treat people and this is how they need to treat you. It comes down to being respectful. And it comes down to being transparent and honest and all the values of a small company that we both like, that's what we give out. So that's exactly what we're going to expect back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing answer. I mean, I think that I'm not sure telling my younger self would have, would have uh, had the effect I think it would have, right? Like, I think part of it is the journey that I've that I've been on my entire life has made me into who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, going through all of those things, hearing all those microaggressions, or having all the experiences I've, that I've had has brought me here to make me as strong as I am and yeah. to make me able to stand up to myself and make me as knowledgeable as I am because I think part of that is being naive to a certain degree, right? Like you're naive to the fact that people – shouldn't get away with that like that isn't respect mm -hmm. that's not how you should treat me just because i don't have the same tiddly bits you do like yeah. <laughs> that's not okay so um but i think learning all of that you know i don't think it would have had the same effect it would have been like my mom telling me like yeah, I <laughs> and i don't you know <laughs> yeah 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 whatever mom <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess you have a point there
Um, somebody uh, said under 50 is young in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that a question? The answer is yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, I don't know. <laughs> sure, if you're young at heart. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Are there any other questions? Any, any other questions? Yeah. I don't, as women in the sign industry, we just came to construction. What have you seen change? Oh, here's Russell asked one. As women in the sign industry, which is kin to construction, what have you seen change over the years and what still needs to change to see equality and equity? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Coming in with a hard hitting question. Yeah, I know. That's like slap on the face. Ooh. Yeah, um, I think it's just like seeing people, seeing the leaders in this industry change their perspective. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that needs to change. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, well, yeah, because it comes down to, you know, how whatever the leaders in the industry are doing, that's what everybody else is going to follow and, and, and decide that's the that's the norm, that's the standard. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, like for me, it's it, it's the same thing. When I see like women in the industry, I, you know, I get excited. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So I, I give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, mm -hmm. let's see, you know, like if they're if they're actually any good or you know, because it could easily be there's there's people that are good at what they do and they're not good at what they do. And it has nothing to do with if they're a guy or a girl. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I see women in the industry, I definitely get excited. And I'm like, oh, this is exciting. Let's see if, what they're about. Let's see if they can actually uh, prove, like, that they know what they're talking about. But I don't go, uh, oh, like she doesn't know what she's talking about because she's a chick. Like, I, I actually get excited and I wait and I listen and I see their work and everything and then you can make that decision, you know, after the fact, not just because you see somebody um, that isn't 80-year-old uh, men. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, even, there is a talk on, I don't know if you got this invitation, but I, it came out through email, through... Uh, Gosh, I think it's through ISA and Sign Builders. They're doing the Women Leading the Industry online thing. Um, they had they sent out an email saying um, targeting women in the industry and talking about how their email habits and like all of these things are aren't getting them taken seriously. Like the way that the email was worded. Like I understand that the the that their heart was in the right place, that they want to, you know, try to help women grow and gain confidence to lead the industry. But, like, if I use five exclamation points in my email, I use five exclamation oh, points, and that shouldn't okay. make oh, a guy yeah. not taken seriously. <laughs> like, the way they worded it, it was just like, this is just perpetuating that same, yeah, the same what, stuff. What you're saying is, like, that's not how you write an email, and if you want to be taken seriously, like, don't put a happy face emoji at the end. Right. Like, like, you know, again, I, I knew that that whole crew of women, like, they're doing a great job, and they are really trying to mentor all these young women in the industry, which is awesome, you well, know. I think, yeah, I think what's kind of happening there is that they're just trying to mimic whatever helped them sort of blend in instead of right. saying, you know, like, if all the guys are acting some type of Way, then they start to act that way too because they want to be validated and accepted into this group so they're not necessarily being themselves they're just trying yeah. to be liked by the uh, group of yeah. dudes and then you know then they go and teach other girls this is how you do it <laughs> i mean to be honest i think that so i went to the event page and the wording on the event page was completely different and like so much more empowering and i was like that was just bad copywriting that, 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 that was <laughs> This event looks awesome. You know, oh, yeah. the they've had. So I think that sometimes, and again, I think it's because of all these built-up microaggressions that women mm -hmm. get, you know, mm -hmm. every day, regardless of the industry. I think in construction in general. Yeah. Um, I think it makes us just a little bit more sensitive yeah. to, those, to those things, too. So. Well, you know what's kind of cool, though, that women have been in the sign industry forever, and they've been a huge part of 
the sign making industry history as well. They just weren't recognized for it. And they were just sort of in the back, you know, of things. But I mean, the most one of the most famous signs ever, Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas, you know, was the sign and made by a woman, you know, Betty, who thankfully lived until she was 93 years old, I think, to to see the recognition that she deserved, because she also yeah. did many other um, historic signs that are still in the sign museum. And mm -hmm. she did a sign them and she was bending neon and, you know, she was really involved. And, you know, had she died earlier in her life, like she probably wouldn't have gotten the recognition that she deserved. And, you know, so in that sense, I do see a huge gap that um, is now uncovered where like now we see more women in the industry that are leading and they're in the front face of things, you know, where in the past, like they were still doing those things, but, you know, they, they were just like, you just go hide over there right. <laughs> and they don't put your name on anything, you know, um, yeah. but yeah, somebody said, Mars, you don't have a sign industry background. How did you gain your knowledge? So I have sign industry background now. I think they meant like I didn't have one when I started. How did I? You didn't grow up like, in it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, I, earlier we were talking about a little bit about my story on how I got started in the sign industry. But basically, I, I on site, just getting jobs in sign companies and hands on and just going to workshops and going to like sign expo, reading books, Googling things you know, just watching people do it. Like I would go with the installers to see how they would install things just so that I can basically understand the process a little bit more. Uh, you know, just seeing how the production takes place. I understand the process of that. And you know what's kind of cool? Uh, the Gemini sign catalog. Uh, I love going through that because uh, especially when I didn't know anything about science because they have everything like acrylic, mm -hmm. cast, metal. They have, you know, all the depths and thicknesses and they, all the ways that you can install it. And also that also is like, weirdly enough, like very, very um, academic book, even though it's a catalog yeah. with pricing. Um, and that and what else? Oh, and the Science of the Times magazine was one of my Bibles too, when I didn't know anything. I used to just read it from cover to cover, even the advertisement for laser cutters for CNC routers because I'd be like what does that do what is that for why does it cost so much money <laughs> and then um, I got to actually become a columnist for the science of the times magazine for two years uh, and all my all my articles are still online if if you don't have the hard copy you can read all my articles mm -hmm. that I wrote in which I talk about um, a lot of my experiences uh, as a sign maker and just talk about, you know, how, for example, one of the articles I wrote once was about how neon and LED can coexist mm -hmm. because there's this weird war of like neon is better, LED is better. And it's like, they're actually different guys. You can use them at the same time too. And they're both really awesome. And so I wrote about how they can coexist and, and um, why they're different. And so, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's those are some of the ways that I that I learned what I know now. That's awesome. I also just want to add in, like, I know this question wasn't for me, but I do want to add in, like, when you're on site with an installer or in the shop while being fabricated, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you can ask questions. Yeah. Pe there are 50 terms for the same thing for oh everything in this industry. Yes. And if you hear one that you don't recognize, yeah. ask. Because it's probably something you know, you just did, have never heard yeah. someone call it that before. Exactly. So just ask questions and then you start to gain more knowledge, which I know seems like an easy answer, but. I know. Don't be like me. I call everything a thingy. <laughs> like, yeah, that thingy. Get the thingy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, then, yeah, someone, it was a few years ago, but someone was calling a uh, sweep, a PVC sweep mm. for the. Yeah. And I was like, I've never, I've well, never heard someone call it that. Bond, they call it Sintra as well. Yeah. Right? And I, uh -huh. the first time I heard Sintra, I was like, what is that? And then I'm looking what? at it and I'm like, yo, that's Dye Bond. <laughs> like, it's the same thing. But then, yeah. like, here's one, here's one thing. People call acrylic, like, 
plexiglass and plexiglass is actually the brand of acrylic yeah. it's not, not yeah. actually acrylic so it's like yeah. it's like uh what's the cereal it's like, like the Kleenex yes yeah. it's like the Kleenex the you know the paper, or the band-aid uh, yeah the <laughs> Flakes, yeah. you know, it's like it's like brand names for the thing that it yeah. is, but that's not what it's called. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. Uh, Erica asks, "Don't say a hands-on approach is the best way to learn about signage." That's an easy answer. Yes, I do. I don't think there's an easier way to learn. Um, what uh, hands-on approach is? Yeah, yeah, because it's it's like driving. No, yeah. <laughs> well, also there's no class for it. Yeah. yeah. So you it's, not, it's like yeah. driving you can't just tell somebody this is what you do and then you get them in a car and they're gonna know how to do it like they're just gonna crash and you have to sort of get adjusted and you know go slowly and see how things work so yeah i think so i think it's the best mm -hmm. way and uh, probably the only way and we have one last question yeah. and then I know we're past our time, so yeah, yeah. Uh, can you share your experiences with new tech in the sign industry and how it's benefited or complicated projects for you? Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Before, while you're thinking of that, someone just asked, I do permits for a small company in OKC. What's the best advice for me to really excel in my position? Deliver cookies to the permit office. Yes, get, get, get like Give them cookies. super homies. With <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. With, the, um, <laughs> with, with whoever's processing your permit. Yeah, yeah, get to know the inspectors and get super mm -hmm. close to them. Mm -hmm. um, just essentially build relationships, like genuine relationships, though. Don't, don't be fake about mm -hmm. it. Um, no. Like, like, just be yourself. Get to know them. Uh, go the extra mile, like she said. Give them, give them cookies. Take them coffee. Remember their name. Mm -hmm. Ask how they're doing, and um, build a relationship with them so that they can they can appreciate you in a in a more like person to person type of way instead yeah. of just like oh god another permit. Well, well, and really, all that gives you is like the ability to have a conversation with them, so that if you're if there's a small detail off in your drawing or you're asking, right. you know, how to really understand what this section of code means, mm -hmm. then you can actually talk to them and they'll take the time to do that. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thank it's you. not really the bride which they're going to accept yeah, everything. Like, hey, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to go to the, to the murder barn and yeah. pick, up, pick up their cookies. Right. Uh, uh, new what was tech. the other question? Uh, the new it tech. was uh, new tech in the industry. Well, I do think, well, like, I had thought too new. Like, what was new to me, like, uh, using, you know, like, uh, going from, like, hand-cutting letters to using CNC routers or mm -hmm. laser cutters, for example. Even going from CNC routers to laser cutters for specific type of signage really changed the game because you get a cleaner edge, mm -hmm. you know. So for interior signs that are more eye level and people are closer to, you mm -hmm. have to pay more attention to the detail and the finish of that sign. You, you know, make sure the edges are nice and clean, make sure the paint uh, has, a, you know, the perfect finish. There's no like drips or any like orange peel or anything like that just as good as it can be um so there's certain things that can help you have like a like a better quality final product mm -hmm. whereas if it's like a sign that's going to go on like a 20-story building and the letters are like you know five feet tall the amount of detail that you're going to put on that it's not the same that you put into like an office sign where everybody gets to stand right in front of it so if you um, could just preach that every day like <laughs> that's the one thing that people like i don't know why it's the hardest thing for people to understand yeah. like they're this close to it, it yeah to it does yeah. because it's yeah. like they're gonna see it and it's yeah it, and then once you see any little flaw you can't unsee that ever like it's just it's like the only thing that stands out so yeah. um and so you have to take that into consideration um another little device is i have this um this little digital like um measuring device. i forget is that what it's called um, is it the one that's measuring like how deep letters oh, no, are no, no, or how no, thick no, material no, i'm talking about the one with the little laser where you like point like say, oh yeah 
Yeah, that's what yeah. the, the laser they, tape measure thing. Yeah, so it's like it has a little laser um, and and say like I can't reach something with the measuring tape or, and then you just yep. set it and it, the laser will tell you like, oh, that's 20 feet from here to there. Yeah. And it's, oh my God, it's like- It's a life changer. So Do not awesome. drop it though. My warning to everyone, don't get a laser tape measure and drop it. <laughs> it does break. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would think so. Yeah, it definitely. <laughs> but that does. thing is awesome. That's a so great. I feel like that, yeah. yeah, I feel like that's one of the things that make everything easier. Mm -hmm. And it's so accurate. I mean, sometimes it's, oh, yeah. I get better uh, dimensions out of that than like trying to reach or be Absolutely. in a ladder. Yeah, I think uh, the only I'll go the kind of uh, software route, since yeah. that's what we live in. I'm going to do a shameless plug. Ooh. Shameless. Uh, sign tracker is a great management tool for sign mm -hmm. companies. It, in full transparency, it is developed and owned by my dad. That's what he did in retirement. Oh, uh, wow. He actually developed this software while he owned his large sign company in Texas. He developed it at the beginning out of just single Excel sheets. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's like an online-based uh, software that helps you manage. But it has everything. It has your CRM. It has your quoting. It integrates with QuickBooks. It is everything. Yeah. Um, that is cool. So, if you guys are looking for that, that's great. That that makes our life a little bit easier. We also use just like Monday.com, which is not a shameless plug. I'm not related to them at all. Uh, but we do use that for our internal communication. <laughs> that's cool. That's a good one, actually. Good job mm -hmm. on that one. I didn't even think about that at all. That's what I mean. And I live in software. So anyway, those are all the questions I see, Mars. Thank you yeah. so much for doing this yeah. with me today. Thank you. Was, and thank you. again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank for you. For your uh, Women in Sign Award. I do totally yes. deserve thank it. You. And I'm thank so excited. You. Has that come out yet? They announced it. They have The magazine hasn't come out, but they did do the is official it, announcement. Okay. Is it the March uh, April. one? or? It's the April. April. It's the okay. one that'll be, um, they'll issue it, I guess, at ISA, if you guys are going to ISA. Right on. Uh, so there's yeah, also some sort of, like, ceremony they're going to do at ISA that I should know details on, and I know I've received emails, so if anyone from ISA is on here, I'm so sorry you've given them to me. I've just been, it's been coconuts, so I haven't <laughs> read them, uh, but I will be there. <laughs> so. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, so April, that comes out, so make sure you guys check that out. Um, yeah. and give Liz some love. So yeah. this was so and fun. Mark, Thank you, you so much. This for was the, fun. Anyway. Will you be at the IFA show in not, Vegas this year? No, unfortunately not this year. I'm not going to be there, but we will meet somehow, somewhere. We will. Maybe we will. at a murder barn. I don't maybe, know. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I was just at Disneyland, so it's going to be a few months before I'm back, but next time I'll hit okay. you up. <laughs> Do you go there often? Or... Yeah, too much. It's embarrassing. Okay. I shouldn't tell you. Yeah. You know what's it's funny is uh, you would think I, I would go there much because I'm mm -hmm. like so close to it, but I haven't actually been there since like, like been there for fun since I was like 18. So I know. it's way different as an adult. Yeah. You yeah. could go. Yeah, it's I so need, much fun. I need, I need to check Especially out. if you can go sans children. It's even better. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, cool. so we'll, I, we'll I grew up in that. Southern California. So, well, till I till 95. So I went to Disneyland growing up a lot. Okay. That's why everyone here knows that I love Disney. Um, so and now that I'm in Texas, I go to both oh. often. Oh, yeah, because you're in the middle. Makes sense. Yeah, I am. Cool. And then I just did my first at the end of last year, went to Disney Paris for the first time. So oh. I'm all about it. This is my yes, life. Yes. That's so cool. So anyway, it was great meeting you. I can talk about Disney I, for hours, I so I will not take up your time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I hope this, you have a great day. Yes, thank you. Is this going to get saved, this whole thing, so we can yeah. play about Erica it? Erica just texted me some, um, some instructions to save it, okay. and I will do that. Okay. And no, um, <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm looking for it right now. <laughs> Cool. So that way, yeah, that way we, can, we can keep it in the archives and, and people can, can see, whoever didn't get to see it live, they can check it out later. Um, yeah. Cool. I will be. Well, it was awesome meeting you. I'll see you again soon. Let's do it yeah, again. Sounds great. Thanks, Mars. All right.
Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you all for joining. Bye, everyone. Thank you.